Thank you, Nancy, and thank you to the ARF for the opportunity to talk about our paper, which is called, Why Do People Watch So Much Television and Video? Implications for the Future of Viewing and Advertising. Uh, so if I cue the next slide, um, I suppose the first thing I have to do is justify the title of our paper, because I suppose a lot of people know why we're watching so much television and video now. It's because we're locked inside with COVID-19. We can't do much else. But surely before COVID-19, television and video watching was declining. Uh, to investigate that, we asked Nielsen Media Research to send us a custom report about how television and video viewing has been evolving over the last 25 years. So here we go with the first of those um, slides. Um, it's showing live television has actually declined. If you look at the average viewer on the left, um, their viewing went down about three hours or about 25 minutes a day. Now, the average viewer includes a lot of older viewers, you know, like the average TV viewer is about 60 years old these days, and they watch a lot of television. So this probably um, underestimates the decline. So we looked at 35 to 54 year olds, and the decline was much greater. They went down about um, four hours a day. Um, but the biggest decline of all was the future television watchers, the 18 to 34 year olds. Their live TV viewing was just about halved over the last 25 years. But if we go to the next slide, um, live television isn't the only thing people can watch on a TV set. They can also watch uh, time shifted television or bought or rented uh, DVDs or VHS tapes back in 1992. And if we look at the average viewer, if we include this recorded television, viewing's actually gone up by about two minutes a day, although for the other two groups, it's still gone down. Now on the next slide, we're gonna add in online video viewing on any device, not just the TV set. And now we see that for the average viewer, the amount of viewing per day has gone up to nearly six hours a day and three and a half. 0.3 hours of those are spent watching video on a device that's other than a TV set. And the similar story with the 35 to 54 year olds, they've also increased their viewing. Um, 18 to 34 year olds, their viewing has still gone down, but only by about nine minutes a day. And about 45 minutes a day is spent watching video on a device that's not a TV set. So if we cue the next slide, people are indeed watching a lot of television and video. Total viewing has been stable or increasing for the last 25 years. So what can explain this? We reviewed some previous media research into people's motivations for viewing. So next slide. We looked at two strands of this media research. The first was uses and gratification studies, uh, which use surveys to ask viewers why they watch. And the other research strand was behavior observation studies, which sometimes ask their participants about their reasons for their behavior, or these reasons were interpreted by the researchers. Both of these strands agree that the main reasons for watching television are to relax and to escape. And a minor reason was uh, to get information. For example, in the behavior studies, more viewers said that they watch TV programs because it helped them to relax than they said it helped to make them think. And uh, some initial evidence from the UGT, Uses Gratifications Theory study, suggests that these reasons still apply to online video. If we go to the next slide. So the fun bit for me for this was reading lots and lots of lab studies to try and explain why TV and video are so good at helping us to relax and escape. Now, um, in the behavior studies, when people watch TV, they reported feeling drowsy and sleepy. So was this because they were watching late at night? Or does TV help us to relax by making us sleepy? If we look at the next slide, It's hard to ask people if you are asleep. So sleep researchers measure brain waves using EEG to tell whether people are asleep or awake. When people are drowsy or sleepy, their brains emit slow theta and delta waves. But if, if they're awake, their brains emit 
alpha waves if they're relaxed or beta waves if they're actively thinking. Let me go to the next slide. Here are the results from studies that compare watching television with other tasks and measure EEG. So we can see that compared to a relaxation task on the left hand side, eyes closed, television has more um, active beta waves than eyes closed, but it has more relaxed alpha waves compared with reading a magazine. So these results show that compared to another low cost way to spend our time, TV is better at helping us relax than reading. However, there were no theta or delta waves in these studies. So television does not make you sleepy. If it did, people could not watch television for six hours a day. If we go to the next slide. Next, we looked at the evidence for why television and video is so good at helping people to escape and forget about their worries. Most of this evidence was based on Annie Lang's theory about how our brains have a limited capacity for processing media messages. If we go to the next slide. Now, for example, if you're driving a car, your brain allocates a full gas tank of uh, cognitive resources to this difficult task. Most of these resources will be used up by the primary task of driving. But if there's any leftover resources, they can be measured by a secondary task, such as lifting your foot off the accelerator if you see a light flash on the dashboard. So in, in this experiment, when all the drivers had to do was drive around a track, they took about a third of a second to react to seeing the light. What was very interesting in this study was that when they made the drivers listen to the radio and they said, you have to listen very carefully to the radio because we're going to ask you a test later about what you hear. So they listened to the radio much more intently than they would normally listen to the radio. Radio listening made no difference to their reaction times. But if they were driving while making a hands-free phone call, that used up so many cognitive resources that their reaction times were dangerously slower. If we go to the next slide, you can measure secondary task reaction times during television by asking people to press a button if they see a light or hear a sound. Now, with television, because people are watching to relax, they may not allocate a full gas tank of cognitive resources to that task. And the few resources they do allocate are likely to be used up by the primary task of watching television, which automatically attracts our attention, leaving very little for the button pressing task. So if we compare with a simple task, which measures the maximum possible button pressing speed, television's reaction time was about 50% longer. There were only three studies we found that compared television with radio. And in those, the reaction time was slightly faster, suggesting that radio doesn't use up so many cognitive resources when it's the primary task. But because there are only three studies, the difference was not statistically significant. This suggests that uh, television is better than radio at helping us to escape because it literally takes our minds off things and we can't think about anything else. So we go to the next slide. If television and video are so good at helping us relax and escape, what's the implications for advertising? Well, because these needs are not going away, video consumption is not going to fall. If anything, um, it's going to go up because uh, we'll be able to watch video and driverless cars instead of listening to the radio. And if people are watching uh, to relax and escape, they're not going to want to make their own material. So this will be a demand for premium professionally produced material. And if people are watching for six hours a day, advertisers need to keep advertising on video, even though it's much harder these days with the fragmentation across platforms and net networks. Uh, maybe if I go to the next slide. Uh, there's much more research needed on this and we're currently working on a project with media science, seeing if these old studies replicate when we use uh, non-student samples. Most of these were student samples that we reviewed. And we're comparing uh, TV and video with new media like social media. Uh, but in future research, they could look at other types of videos, so snackable video like TikTok, does that satisfy different needs? And we might use different measures like fMRI to look at uh, deeper needs, perhaps that stories uh, um, satisfy. 
So the final slide, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with us at these email addresses. Thank you for watching and I'll hand back to Nancy.